Hi there, I'm John from CNCRI.com and today we make custom foam packaging inserts. So water packaging foam inserts. Well, basically what this is, a company has a milling machine and they make lots of metal parts and they, they ship it out for post-processing. So that could be heat treating or you know, anodizing or what have you. There's a ton of different steps that are involved with making metal parts. And one of the problems is if you just ship them in a package and you let UPS or FedEx or whoever handle the package, everything's gonna get you know, mixed around and stuff like that. It'll get dented and scratched. Now what this does is prevent that from happening. So what they do is they put the parts in here and they put the next layer on, more parts and so forth, all the way up to has however many they wanna ship out. And what this does is protects the parts from being scraped, scraped scratched or peeled or what have you. Uh, so after the process is done, they ship it back to the factory and they do their final, final uh, processing of the parts. So this protects them everywhere. As you can see, if they move around here or here or anywhere, there's no issue at all. And all of these have little holes as well. And the reason for that is just to make them even lighter. Uh, you wanna make these things as light as possible, but also as strong and rigid as possible because what you want to do is have lots of parts in this and you don't want it to break while you're shipping it out. What I really enjoy about cutting foam like this here is how long the bit lasts. In this case here, I'll probably do a million of these units and the bit will be just as sharp as the first unit I cut. It's really easy on machinery as well, uh, so I can fly through this stuff relatively fast. And the precision is, is amazing as well because of course I'm using a CNC machine. Now, when it comes to making this kind of stuff, you do have to be careful about uh, the steps involved with it uh, because it is foam and it does sort of shear uh, on itself and it sort of rips a little bit as well. So if you try to be too aggressive on it, you end up actually pushing or pulling the foam off where you don't want it to come off. In this case here, there's multiple levels to what we're doing. So because of that as well, uh, you wanna make sure you're, going, you're working your way down through the material. What that means is, let's say you have a pocket that's, you know, half an inch and another one that's one inch and another one that's an inch and a half. You don't want to go to the inch and a half first and then do the half inch and then do the one inch because then you have issues with uh, the final product actually looking kind of rough. What you want to do is slowly work your way down. So you do the half inch first, then you go over it with the one inch and then you go over it an inch and a half deep and then you get, you know, the optimal results. In this case here, you can actually see a little bit of uh, dark particles on the top left of this. And that's actually from a job we're doing similar to this, except the material is actually HDPE, which is what they use for custom cutting boards. But in that case there, it's a jig for a UV printer that we're, uh, we were prototyping at the time of doing this as well. Now that stuff is completely different to this. Uh, plastic cuts really, really well, yes, but it also has a lot more uh, sort of flex and bounce to it. That's the nice thing about this foam here is that there's zero bounce. So it's completely flat and just stays flat. But for the application where we're using the HDPE, this stuff just can't work. It's not strong enough to support what it's gonna be doing. Now in this case here, as you saw, I made the sort of trenches first. Now I'm doing all the pockets on this. Uh, and again, step by step. If I were to do the pockets first and then the trenches, all those little parts where they intersect would actually come off. It wouldn't be a really nice result as you see here. The nice thing about this foam is that it's incredibly lightweight and it's relatively strong as well. So when the customer is using this for repeated parts shipping back and forth to from the factory, uh, they don't have to worry about too much about the cost of wearing these things out. It's relatively cheap material. It processes again relatively fast uh, compared to other materials we can work here in the shop with. Now, some things you gotta keep in mind with this kind of foam is that yes, you are shipping it back and forth. You do have some wear and tear on the foam. Eventually, you need more units made. Uh, but if you have something that's relatively rigid and you can layer it onto each other, uh, it actually builds up strength altogether and it's perfect for this application. So as, as you just saw the machine behind me make these things, uh, what you'll notice is that there's quite a few passes involved. And that's just more efficient way of producing these. So the first pass on this is actually making these little tabs that you see. So that's why you see the machine going straight like this and straight like this for all 10 of this. Uh, the next step after that is actually to do the holes here or the pockets. 
And that is because if you do the pocket first, first and then you do this, you end up with like little pieces of extra foam on all the edges. The next step after that is to make all the holes that you see here. And for the same reason, if you did the holes first, well then you're machining something that's kind of redundant because the problem is you've already machined out the hole here. So why not just have it go a little bit faster in making the final hole rather than making a big hole. And then after that, you go over this and you make the pocket. And the final step after that is actually to cut them out. Now you'll notice the machine goes up a little bit as it goes around. That's because it's making tabs. I sanded them off here. So what the tabs do, they prevent the part from moving on you. So I have a vacuum table, so it's sucking down. I also have screws holding down the foam, but it can still move on you regardless uh, of what you do uh, during production. So what the tabs do is they keep everything aligned and perfectly straight and not moving while the machining for the whole foam board is done. Because what you have to realize is the more holes you do into this foam, the less vacuum or suction you have because it's leaking out from everywhere. So if you're looking for custom foam inserts for tooling or what have you, contact me at cncrr.com. We'll make it for you and ship it right to your door.